Hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to QC Event School's webinar. Tonight, we're here to talk about how to plan an amazing holiday party. Tis the season. It's the day before Thanksgiving, and I we just had family over. They're actually still downstairs. We had a yummy Thanksgiving dinner, and we're doing it again tomorrow with the other side of the family. So um, wishing you all a happy Thanksgiving, and I'm thrilled to be here with you this evening talking about how to plan an awesome holiday party. So thanks for tuning in. I always like to start the webinars by introducing myself. So um, for those of you who don't know me or haven't uh, seen me before in a QC event school webinar, and my name is Alyssa Perna. I am a tutor for a variety of courses at QC event school. So right now I'm tutoring one of their foundation courses, which gives you really that solid background and foundation um, to your event planning career. I'm tutoring their corporate events course. I also tutor their festival course, as well as their promotional event planning course. And I want to also give you a little bit of background about myself to um, help you understand why I'm here tonight talking to you about how to plan a great holiday party. I've been working in the event planning industry for about 12 years, and my background is really focused on corporate and nonprofit events. I am currently the owner of Experience Events, and it's a full-service strategic event planning and consulting firm, and we offer creative solutions for corporate and nonprofit customers. I also uh, work with a variety of clients. It could, I work with museums, associations, for-profit organizations, and beyond. And I have experience planning conferences, festivals, fundraisers, promotional and live events, and so much more. I'm also the managing director for an organization called Ingenuity Cleveland, and we host year-round programming and an annual festival. And what we do is am animate urban spaces in Cleveland. So we took over this big giant warehouse this year, and we put in all these art installations. The festival is a weekend long, and it's really the region's most boundary-pushing festival of art, music, and technology. It has over 15,000 guests throughout the weekend, and uh, we come together and we have fun and celebrate Cleveland's creative community. So that's a little bit about me. And I would like to now dive in and review the key points that we'll hit tonight, the agenda for the webinar tonight. So again, we're here to talk about how to plan a really great holiday party. So here's what, we'll, what the night's gonna look like. So number one, we're going to start by talking about key elements to produce a great holiday party. So that could be catering, those essentials, the event decor, the look and the feel, the entertainment, um, activities that you'll have at the party, and just the overall experience of the event. Then we'll talk about ways to improve the guest experience. So um, maybe changing up this year's holiday party to offer up something just a little bit different that your guests will be impacted by and will Create some great memories. Then we'll talk about some examples of holiday parties and there's a wide variety of types of parties you can host. You can get really creative and we'll dive into a few examples of parties that I've been involved with planning and I'm hoping that some of you as you're as we're going through this webinar will comment on the feed and maybe even share a photo of a, par a party you planned or some of the decor you've created. I wanna see what you guys are up to. So please share and we'll look at some of those later after we go through the core of the content tonight. And of course, last but certainly not least, questions and answers. So what we did this uh, webinar was we pre-collected a bunch of questions. So thanks to everyone who submitted their questions ahead of time. And um, I'll address each of those questions, but also as we go through the webinar, please continue to post questions on the live comment feed and I'll be able to address those uh, towards the end as well. And last but not least again, before we finally dive in and we get into the reason why you're tuned in this evening, I wanted to let you know that QC Event School does have an awesome Black Friday deal going on right now and I wanted to make sure you were aware of it. So new students to QC Event School, they can enroll in a foundation course, like the Corporate Events course, 
And uh, QC right now, they're offering their lowest uh, deposit and lower monthly payments. And you'll also receive your choice of a specialization course for free. So this is only going to last till Friday. So make sure if you're interested that you think about it and make a decision soon. Also, current students and graduates can receive 60% off of additional courses that you enroll in. Again, these deals end on Friday, so contact QC now if you're interested. So going back to the webinar, planning an awesome holiday party. One of the essential parts of my business experience events is to create memorable experiences through events, and holiday parties can certainly be one of them. So let's talk about how to create, shape, and develop your holiday party into a memorable experience that your guests will never forget. Let's begin. Let's start out by just covering the basics. Why even throw a holiday party? Why do people or companies throw holiday parties in the first place? And there are a lot of reasons why. So let's give you some examples. So perhaps you personally are tasked with putting together your organization's holiday party. Or instead, maybe you want to show your customers that they're appreciated. A holiday party is usually a free event, and it allows participants to network, bond, and build relationships. And most of all, feel appreciated and have fun. So that's typically the purpose of throwing a holiday party. There's a couple different holiday parties that really are ones you've probably more so heard of than others. So holiday parties for employees or holiday parties for customers. So first we'll talk about holiday parties for employees. So at a company, holiday parties, they're a fantastic way to help uh, promote and improve the internal company culture. So the people that you work with and that you're surrounded by every day aside from your family, the people you go to work and see. So for example, holiday parties provide an opportunity to reinvigorate employees and remind them of the reasons why they chose to work for that organization in the first place. The party typically provides employees and sometimes you'll invite customers or clients depending on what the company wants to do. But it provides these guests with the ability to interact with colleagues that maybe they don't see too often. And it also gives them access to management that they may not get to interact with frequently or daily. And maybe through a company holiday party, there could be an opportunity to recognize certain employees for their contributions and provide them with an award. And you could do other creative and fun things like maybe you have a raffle giveaway where you're providing gifts to deserving employees. Holiday parties, they can really provide opportunities for recognition and appreciation. And it's going to give employees a morale boost at the most wonderful time of the year. So then on the other hand, Another reason why an organization may throw a holiday party is for clients or customers. And similar to holiday parties for employees, holiday parties for clients or customers, they can offer that same type of recognition and that feel good morale boost. So hosting holiday parties for customers or key stakeholders allow for enhanced relationships with customers. And it also provides the organization with a branding opportunity. So how do we go about making a really memorable holiday party? Let's start by going over some of the key elements. And by key elements, I mean the food, the, the drinks you're serving, the decor, the look and the feel. Um, so we'll start with food and beverage. So I don't know how many of you, you know, what's the thing you remember or don't remember about an event you've been to? At least for me, I always remember the food. If the food was bad, I definitely remember it. And I remember that I don't want to go back there. But if the food was fantastic and I had like the best mac and cheese or whatever it was that I had, I remember that. So having good food and um, drinks is, is definitely a key element towards creating a solid holiday party. So there are a lot of options to consider for dining. So this is more event planning basics that we're gonna go into. So if you're hosting a holiday party, there's a bunch of different food options you can have. One, uh, one style of uh, providing food could be a buffet. 
So everybody knows what a buffet line is. And depending how, how uh, large your guest count is for this particular party, you might have a double-sided buffet um, where people will go down either side of the buffet line and serve themselves whatever interests them the most. Another way to serve food is a traditional sit down or a plated dinner. So that might mean guests are coming into the party and they're sitting down at a table, whether or not they have assigned seats, and they're being served by a server. So the server's bringing them the salad, and then they're bringing them the soup, and then they're bringing them their, uh, their entree and, and actually serving the guest food. Those, I feel, tend to be more tra traditional, uh, higher-end, fancier type of events when you're actually getting um, served a plate of food. And depending on where you go, Honestly, buffet or plated dinners can cost, um, can equal out in cost. So it just depends on the type and the, the, the feel of the party that you want to, you want to host. Another type, another way to serve food is through cocktail stuff, cocktail style with stations and pass hors d'oeuvres. So cocktail style might mean you have maybe some round tables with seats, but you have high top tables or cocktail smaller tables that people can just stand at or you might have high chairs there. And people can go around and visit a, a pasta station and then visit the meat shaving station and then visit the vegetable crudite station and sort of get whatever they'd like and eat it. They can also be past hors d'oeuvres. So maybe it's that cocktail style, again, with the seating high top tables and things like that. But there, you have servers walking around doing past hors d'oeuvres. And you can even do a mix of both. You can have some stations, and then you can have past hors d'oeuvres as well to really make it personal and feel extra special and fancy. And with that said, we also need to consider drinks because I'd be thirsty too if I was getting all this yummy food from the various stations. So there's a lot of ways to handle drinks. So one way is you could offer up drink tickets. So offering up drink tickets are a great way to control your beverage costs as well. So let's say we know you have uh, a, an event, a holiday party, and these people, boy, do they like to drink alcoholic beverages. And you are working off of a budget, a pretty strict budget um, for your event. So one way to kind of keep those costs under control are to start with drink tickets. So maybe you're offering each guest two drink tickets. And then after that, it's a cash bar, meaning the guests will then pay cash or maybe use a credit card if they want to purchase additional drinks beyond the two. So that way you as an organization are only getting charged for those two drinks from a money perspective. And then anything above and beyond that, you're not ruining the guest time by stopping the, the alcohol service, but you're also allowing them the ability to purchase additional drinks if they want to continue beyond two drinks each. You also may just consider serving drinks with dinner. So maybe you have a few bottles of wine at the table and they're being served along with the dinner, or maybe you're doing a drink service at dinner. That's an option. And yet again, cocktail style. So you might have um, servers walking around with a, a, a platter full of champagne or wine or coming around and taking drink orders. And just remember with all, all parties to be responsible, you want to make sure to promote responsible drinking, of course. And you, know, you can do certain things like make sure that taxis are available for guests. Make sure that you have staff say, you know, staying sober and, and monitoring and keeping an eye on guests if they're getting a little too rowdy or had a little bit too much to drink. Um, the worst thing you'd want to happen if, if you're not paying close enough attention is for something to happen to one of your guests um, you know, or, or somebody to get hurt or injured or, or have alcohol poisoning. Okay, Because at the end of the day, you as the planner are liable but also the venue is liable, the bartender serving the alcohol are liable, and it would be just a whole mess that would not make the holidays any fun. So just always promote the responsible drinking and make sure you're, you're, you're keeping an eye on things as the planner and the organizer. So let's, let me give you an example of what a, a holiday party could look like, hypothetically, putting those key elements in. So maybe you wanna start with a cocktail hour. Your guests show up, 
there's a little space for them where they're getting served their drinks for an hour. And around the perimeter of the room, you have a bunch of raffle items. And every guest that comes in gets five raffle tickets. And they take these raffle tickets and they put them in a box next to the item that they want to really bid for. And um, while they're having drinks and, and, and some hors d'oeuvres and interacting and socializing with guests. So it's a little bit of entertainment and also a little bit of fun. So after the cocktail hour, then maybe the guests move into the area where they'll be having dinner. So they'll move into another room and they will then be served a plated dinner. But and while they're being served some their salad and their entree, Maybe you have employee recognition awards going on where you're recognizing certain employees for achieving milestones or exceeding sales goals. And after that, break it up. You don't want to hear speeches all night long at a holiday party. So maybe you put on some music, you have an optional dance floor, and you have uh, dessert, coffee, after dinner drinks, and just a good time for the rest of the night. So that's one key element, uh, food and drinks. So another key element to planning a holiday party is event decor. So we're getting into the holiday season now, and there's a lot of things to consider to really make those guests feel like, wow, this is a holiday celebration. I feel in the spirit of the holidays. So you can consider a few things like table decor. For example, centerpieces. When you sit down and you're eating food at a table, your eyes will automatically go to the center of the table. So having some nice centerpieces might really enhance and improve the, the look and feel of the room. Maybe you have some really special, beautiful tablecloths or color coordinating tablecloths to go with the theme. Maybe you have name cards or place cards out for each guest, showing them where they're, where they're seated, table numbers, etc. Then, of course, there's the holiday-themed decor. So... One of the nice things about holiday parties is oftentimes you may be able to book a venue that already has built in holiday decor already. So it's already implemented into the venue. The venue has already decorated their space for the holidays, and now it's just a matter of enhancing it a little bit. So it's a great way to save money and not have to spend too much extra on uh, decor to make it look holiday-ish. And if you do decide that you want to decorate, make sure you consider those uh, holiday essentials, the lights, the garland, the bows, the, the candles, things like that. Um, even the smells, you know, you want it to smell like the holidays. It's a whole experience, and I believe events should tap into all of your senses to really give you that full experience and something that you'll remember. And of course, you want to, when you're looking at the venue, if it's decorated or not, you want to decide on a color scheme or a theme for the holiday party. So maybe you're going with that really traditional red and green, that traditional kind of Christmas color look. Or perhaps you want to go a little bit more elegant and fancy schmancy, and you have your color palette is maybe gold with the creams and the whites and having the candles and and, and having a live jazz band there playing jazz Christmas music. And you really want to portray that ambiance and that elegance. There's a lot of ways you can go. You can go fun and quirky. You can go really fancy. You don't even have to do something holiday themed. Maybe you want to switch the gears and do something beach and tropical themed to, to show people, hey, it's cold outside. Let's have some fun and pretend we're at the beach. There's a lot of creative things you can do. Another key element to consider for the holiday party is, of course, the entertainment. So you could maybe have some background music for dinner and for a social hour. So whether it's live musicians or it's just some nice background music that always helps set the tone and the mood and um, the energy, really, of the room. Uh, you could have a DJ, a live band. You, you know, make sure that you... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having... I apologize for that. I'm having a phone call pop up on my computer. So um, you could have a live DJ or a band after dinner at, for entertainment while people are dancing on the dance floor. And you really want it the, the ambiance to match the decor to really give people a feeling of what the party is supposed to, to 
be like. Um, so consider also what activities in terms of entertainment that could be incorporated into the event. So maybe you have a raffle table, like I mentioned earlier, where it's sponsored gifts and a variety of options. So people are excited to go and maybe win a TV or a round trip airfare or something like that. Um, maybe you want to have a photo booth where people go home with that little souvenir and a fun time picture of them and their colleagues or their spouse. And you have some props and a photographer to make it fun. You could also for smaller parties um, or, or somebody something with a little bit lower of a budget, maybe you do like a fun gift exchange, the white elephant gift exchanges where um, or something under like 10 or $20 for smaller groups and smaller parties. And of course, awards, you know, employees appreciate feeling appreciated. So make sure that you're recognizing what those employees are doing and incorporating some element into the party if it makes sense. So maybe you've hosted the same old holiday party year after year and you want to change it up. So how can you improve the guest experience? There are a couple of things to consider, more than a couple actually. So let's talk about how to improve the guest experience. So one way to do it, if you've, if you've done the party before, maybe again, an example, if you're working at a company and you always plan the holiday party, maybe you wanna survey the guests. So survey your, the other employees and find out what kind of food do they like? What, what do they wanna eat? What do they enjoy most? Is there enough variety? Is, you know, are there, are there a lot of dietary restrictions that maybe you weren't aware of? Also, what kind of music do they want to hear? Do they want it to be like relaxing, Christmassy, jazz sort of music? Or do they want something a little bit more fun and party-like, like pop songs and things like that? And then also survey them on the activities they'd like to see happen, as well as the type of venue, the style of venue they're interested in. Or if you already have it narrowed down to two or three venues, have your staff vote. Have them tell you where they want to go. And it's all about them at the end after all, right? And if you work at a large company um, with many internal stakeholders, so people who are really important and should have some influence on the holiday party, perhaps you could create an event committee that'll help you plan the party. So at my last, um, at my last job, there was an events committee and they would get together and they would, each person would either take an event that happens throughout the year and plan it themselves and be accountable for that event themselves, or one person may be in charge and then delegate the work. So maybe this person's in charge of the centerpieces, this person's in charge of seeking out, finding and negotiating the venue. So there's a lot of ways that you can make people feel involved and um, get them involved and also help you do the, do the job, right, at the end of the day. It's hard to do all that work yourself. So make sure you, if you have some help, to, to tap into it. And maybe you want to have a speech from a party host or even a post-dinner uh, post little speech to thank the guests for attending. Maybe you have the CEO give stand up and say a few words thanking the guests and, and telling them how much they're appreciated. And even maybe you want to offer some small party favors for guests to take home, something that will help them remember the night, Maybe it's just a nice, yummy little chocolate that they can go eat tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, if you would me, because I need it in the morning. But anyway, um, make sure that you try to respect the time that you're advertising for the party. So make sure you're serving dinner on time and the awards are on time so people know what to expect. People will get frustrated if things go on and on and on or drag out. And make sure you have clear directions and signage if, if you're at a, a venue in particular. So I'm going to go back to you guys here on the webinar, and I would love to know, have you guys done anything super creative to celebrate the holidays? And if you have, please comment and tell, tell me, tell us a little bit more about it. Share a photo in the comments and provide a little bit of background about what made your party so special, or if you created a really awesome centerpiece that you're really proud of, snap a photo and share it with us. We want to see it. Um, so that really went over the key elements and some of the core elements of creating a, an awesome holiday party. So finally, let's go into discussing some examples of holiday parties. And I'll focus on a few different types of holiday parties that I've personally been involved with. 
and um, we'll talk about their purpose and the concept behind them and what makes them all a little bit different than one another. And again, please tell us about yours in the comments and we'll get to those a little bit later. So I'll, the first example I have is a holiday party that I planned at a museum, which was the Science Center in Cleveland. And the purpose of this party was to show employees and volunteers how much they're appreciated during the best time of the year, the holiday season. And the concept behind it, honestly, it was sweet and simple. We did something after work uh, on a weekday evening, right after work so people could go right into it. And um, what we did was we had a very, uh, a dinner, really just a, a simple dinner to show appreciation. And we gave a small gift and we showed a movie to volunteers and employees if they wanted to stick around and hang out and have movies and popcorn. But it was really just to show them they're appreciated, and give them a nice yummy dinner. Um, that particular event, it, the museum, it's a nonprofit organization. So we had a really limited budget and we put some music in the background. We had a nice buffet dinner and we utilized the built in decorations that already were at the museum. Um, and, and kept it simple. So it could be as simple as that. Now on a corporate level, uh, larger scale, larger budget, for example, the purpose of a corporate uh, event could be to provide a really high-end party, a really high-end experience for employees, contractors, and select customers to say thank you and we appreciate you yet again. And the concept behind it is it's high end and high impact celebration. So something really memorable and impactful that they'll go, wow, I'm never missing that company's holiday party again. So for that particular example, maybe you're working with a committee, a committee of stakeholders on planning and executing a variety of elements to create the holiday party. So you maybe have a few bands of live music, you have really fancy, beautiful decor, you have these decked out incredible centerpieces that are just captivating and, and, and people go wow when they walk in the room. Maybe you're giving gifts to all of your employees, you're, you're doing the full, full service with the food, the hors d'oeuvres, the drinks, the open bar, full dinner, desserts, after dinner drinks, raffling off awesome prizes like TVs and hotel and airfare stays uh, or, or, or a trip, something like that. So that would be an example of like a really high end, um, higher budget type of party. And then last but not least, my last example is a party that we're planning right now at Ingenuity Cleveland. So we are uh, planning a flannel and finery party. So the purpose of it, it's really an informal party that's uh, showing appreciation to all of the Ingenuity Festival volunteers, musicians, artists, uh, contractors, and partners. So the concept of this party is just fun and quirky. That's the style of Ingenuity as a whole. And the, the party, again, it's themed flannel and finery. So it really allows the guests to wear whatever they want. So whether they're just coming in their best flannel, flannel pajamas, or they wanna come in a fancy dress with pearls, However you show up, it's cool with us. And this type of party, it's, it's potluck style. So we'll have some food there, but people are encouraged to bring some, some food to share. And we'll have drinks, some uh, engaging activities, like maybe some yummy hot chocolate and holiday themed alcoholic beverages. And we're gonna have the ability to just cozy up and enjoy a movie and hang with our extended family at Ingenuity. So, you know, another totally different type of event that's just really relaxed, kicked back. Um, it's still probably high impact, but it, it's the style of, of the organization that that's how we built this particular event. So let's talk about some of your events. I'm going to dive over here and see if anybody's commented on some of their events. Um, let's see what we've got here, guys, and bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to read through. And I see some questions. So I'll, I'll let me start with the questions that were pre-submitted first. Then I'll go back to the feed and we will um, we'll pull up if you guys posted any pictures or examples of the parties you've planned or something that you're proud of, we'll definitely touch on it then. Um, but before I go into the questions and answer part of the webinar, I wanted to remind you that um, QC has an awesome Black Friday deal going on right now. 
and you've got to check it out, whether you're a student, a previous student, or thinking about becoming a student. So new students in particular, you can enroll in a foundation course, like the corporate events course, and QC is also offering their lowest deposit right now and lower monthly payments, and you'll receive your choice of a specialization course for free. So you could take the decor course if you want for free. You could take that um, promotional events course for free. Um, current students and graduates, you guys right now are getting 60% off of additional courses you enroll in. And these deals end on Friday. So make sure you contact QC now if you're interested to learn more and get all the nitty gritty details about, um, about how to take advantage of the deals. So that pretty much wraps up the, the core content about why it's how to plan an awesome holiday party and why it's important and what they're all about. So now I'm going to go into questions and answers. So I will go first into addressing the questions that were submitted over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I'm going to read the person's, person's name, just their first name, and then we'll go into the question. And then I'll dive over to the questions in the feeds and address in the uh, live feed there, and I'll address those as well. So the first question I have was submitted by Shelby H. And Shelby asked, do you have over the top decorations for holiday parties? And my answer to that one is it really depends on the party. So going back to some of those examples I did probably three minutes ago, um, if you, you might have a really fancy, schmancy, high budget party, you know, and, and that might be a perfect opportunity to go over the top with the decorations and make these incredible centerpieces. Maybe have a decorator come and drape the ceiling and put all these lights up and, and, and do some really incredible things. You can even, heck, if you could do something, you could involve pyrotechnics. And it also depends on your budget. You know, if you only have so much money to spend, you're probably spending less on things like decor. But on the other hand, you, that might not be a key focus. So it really just depends on where you're working, who you're hosting the holiday party for, what the budget is. And if you're working with a client, what is their vision? What's important to them? Maybe it is the over the top decor, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's the food. Maybe it's the entertainment. So you have to dig in um, and really find out what's important to the stakeholder you're working with, um, as well as the budget to figure out if you can go over the top or not. So Kayla W, she asked, how can you keep all types of different guests entertained? Great question there as well. And this can be a tricky one because I'm gonna tell you something right now. Um, you can certainly try to please everyone, but you never will, okay? So the, oh, you, you know, if you do a really good job as an event planner, um, hopefully most of the pop, feedback will be positive, but there will always be one or two or five who will give you some really critical feedback or in some cases, some neg negative feedback. So you cannot please everyone, but you can certainly try and you should try. So a great way to figure out how to keep guests entertained, if there's a way to survey guests ahead of time or even call up some of the key people you wanna make sure have a good time if you're hosting a party for a client, for example, Make sure that you're getting that feedback, you're surveying your guests, you're finding out what they want, and do your best to deliver that for them, but you're never gonna please everyone, to be honest. So I think a good way to try to maneuver your way through making sure everybody's entertained and enjoys the entertainment you're providing is to provide a little bit of everything. So maybe you have somewhere quiet with no music. Maybe you have somewhere with that loud dancing music. Maybe you have somewhere that it has like relaxing jazz kind of music. Maybe you have a raffle. Maybe you do appreciation, but it's optional. Maybe you do it at dessert instead of during dinner so people can leave if they don't want to stay for it. So mm -hmm. just, you know, change it up, try different things, see what works and what doesn't, gather the feedback. And if it's all, majority of it is generally positive, you're probably doing something right. So Cheyenne P. asked, how do you begin your holiday planning process? Holiday party planning process, right? Um, again, that this is probably just depending on the situation. So ideally, if you know about, a, you know you're going to have a holiday party, the earlier you can book the venue, the better, because it's holiday season. They're getting booked up like crazy. So you don't want to miss out on number one, a good and reasonably priced venue, right? 
So beyond that, once you have the date set, you've got to get those core essentials figured out first. The who, what, when, where, and why. Um, where are we having it? What's the date? Who is coming? Who are the key people and stakeholders that should be uh, the focus for the party? So answer those questions first. Then you've got to figure out, are you working at a big corporation where you might want to have an events committee that you're working with a bunch of different people throughout the organization to help plan and execute the party? Or is it something small and simple and you are the core planner? If you are, I say the earlier you can get all the, the, the party organized, the better. You can always change it later, but the sooner you figure out the, um, you know, what's being served for food and drinks, uh, what entertainment you'll have, the, the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be. The last thing you want to do is wait until the last minute and try to hurry up and plan something. That's stressful for everyone and quite frankly, not a very good event planner process. So start early, answer those key who, what, when, where, why and elements and then just plan, right? That's how you begin. So Carolyn R. asked, how do you pick a good holiday theme for the decoration and food? Solid question there. And I think this goes back to the venue. What I personally would do, and guys, feel free to chime in and comment here, but personally for me, I'd figure out where am I doing it first? Where, is, where am I hosting the party? Then I'd look at the venue and I'd check out the look and feel of the venue. Maybe it's in an old like barn house style place an old, old barn. So maybe I want to go more rustic and have those little twinkle lights and go with the creams and the golds or something like that. That's how I would probably pick. Or maybe I'm going somewhere fun and quirky and it's decorated in that red and green and it's kind of, it's kind of comic book like. So maybe I go with something more fun and formal. Probably depends on where I'm going first and then also what the budget is. How much money do you have to spend on on the food and the decor and making some good decisions to really balance it out and get the best of both worlds. Cindy B asked, should guests be asked to bring their own liquor? That is a good question and that is a tricky one because the short answer is um, probably not, but it's certainly possible. If you're doing something in a home in somebody's private residence or a private uh, privately owned space, um, it's certainly possible you may be able to have them bring their own uh, alcoholic beverages, but typically it's not. Um, most venues need to have a liquor license and a liquor permit in order to be able to serve and for guests to be able to consume alcohol. So everywhere that I've worked before and everywhere that I've hosted an event, we've had to have a liquor permit in order to serve guests alcohol. Um, they may also have some kind of permit, and I don't know which one it is, but it, maybe the venue won't serve liquor, but they're able to, you're able to bring in your own liquor. So maybe you're hiring bartenders and you're, you're purchasing the alcohol and then you're having it responsibly served to guests. So typically I would say no, guests um, should not probably be asked to bring their own liquor. You're really putting yourself up for a legal you're, you're, you're becoming liable for, for something that bad that could happen with overconsumption of alcohol. Um, and you've just got to be familiar with the laws and the rules and what kind of permits um, you need in order to serve alcoholic beverages. So Michelle, Michelle K asks, what are my favorite non-traditional color schemes for Christmas and the holidays? So you've probably heard me mention it a couple times already but I love the warm colors. So I love those golds, creams, whites, candles. You see my candles back here, guys? Um, the twinkly, the, that, that warm and cozy feeling. I like rustic, that's my personal, you know, I like that rustic and that flannel feel. Um, but that's, you can have an incredibly beautiful party with that, the blues and the silvers. You can do something with those deep greens and the, the uh, little bit more maroony um, reds, right, to create looks and feels. I, I, I like it all, but I think those golds, those kind of warm colors are what I personally like the best. Pamela B. asked, 
when is it too much on the table? And should the room decor match the table? So um, too much, I have seen too much on the table before. Uh, one in particular event that I was at where they had, um, I think they're called charger plates. So it's a plate, a fancy plate that you don't even eat off of underneath a plate that you eat off of candles everywhere, centerpieces, flowers, um, just the table was like cluttered, covered, covered with stuff. That was too much for me. Maybe it works for some people, but it was too much. I think there is a certain, there is a certain balance you want to have where you can still see parts of the table uh, while also putting certain accent pieces on the table, um, not to make it overwhelming or too cluttered or too much to look at. And in terms of should the room decor match the table? Well, of course, in an ideal scenario, that probably would be a good choice to make, but it's not always possible. I mean, you might have rented out a room and it could just be this terrible pink color on the wall and, and, and you can't do anything about it, or maybe the carpet's a horrible color. So you can either play off of it or just people will notice that that's just kind of the cards you were dealt and you're doing the best you can um, and going with a totally different color scheme to still make the, the party work. This is a good question here from Daniela W. Daniela asked, with so many nationalities in the workplace, how do you choose a food that will satisfy everyone? Great question. And I'd like to say again, you're never going to please everyone, first of all. So just know that going into it. But surveying guests is a great option. Or if, um, you know, what's very traditional and typical, which is not necessarily the right choice to make, but if you, if you do buffet style, maybe you're offering a few different options. Maybe you do have a vegetarian, and then you have a fish, and then you have a chicken or a steak or something, or, or beef or something like that. And then you have a pasta and a vegetarian. So you can offer a variety of things buffet style, and also past hors d'oeuvres and cocktail station style. So you have stations where it offers a variety of different foods. And maybe you want to do an around the world theme, right? That's a way to satisfy people. Maybe you have pick three or four uh, flavors to focus on and you theme the holiday party after that and still incorporate the, the twinkle lights and things like that. Um, so Takanobo O asked, does, um, no matter how, if a budget's basically not very high or very good, what, what do you do? And my answer to that would be, um, you, you know, you have to be upfront with your customer. If they are expecting all the bells and whistles, but they're barely giving you enough money to serve food to the guests, let alone drinks, you need to sit down and just have a very frank and honest conversation with your, with your client and your customer and, um, and, and just lay out lay out the numbers for them. Like this is, this is what I can do with this budget amount. Uh, you know, we can maybe take this, the hors d'oeuvres out if you want me to add in um, this kind of centerpiece or something like that. So you need to be honest and of course professional and handle it with tact. And, um, you know, just let the customer know that you're really limited with the budget that they've provided. So their choices, either they can increase their spend, increase their budget and allow you to spend a little more to really offer a better experience, or here are your options with what you have given me to work with. So that, that's what you have to do. And, unfor and unfortunately, that does happen. And it's part of being an event planner. Um, let's see if there's any more questions here to address. So Tara M asked, when you talk about planning uh, for holiday parties involving food, do we mean decorating the food? For example, decorating food like Christmas or have gingerbread treats with uh, red, white, red and white icing for a hat? Honestly, that's up to you. You, you are the creative uh, force here behind this particular party that you're planning. You could totally theme out and go way into detail on the food and have, have those elements incorporated within the food. For example, some corporate events that I've done, we've branded the cupcakes with the corporate event sponsor's logo. So there's all sorts of creative stuff that you can do and really tie that theme into every single thing that happens at the party. 
And that goes down to budget and what you as the creative person want to do with it, right? So that's my answer there. Um, Sybil P asked, even when I have a headcount, I still have a lot of leftovers. What are your suggestions if you're not um, planning a sit down dinner? That is an awesome question. And it took me a while to learn this. So but in a prior role, I did a lot of business to business conferences. And let me tell you, if you guarantee, let's say you know you have 300 people coming to this conference or this holiday party, and you guarantee 300 or maybe a little more to the venue, the venue is probably creating, you can ask the catering staff this question. They, they should be able to tell you what their percentage is. Catering staff will usually generate, in almost all cases, um, a certain percentage more food over what you have guaranteed the venue. So for example, it could be three to 5% typically, percent, sorry, typically. So if you're guaranteeing 300 guests, assume they're making three to 5% more food, but you always want to ask the venue to clarify. There has been one venue before that does not make extra food that I've worked with. Um, so there's that to think about. So always remember that. Uh, beyond that, um, the portions are really, really large. So if you have a buffet, the venue's probably generating a really, really large portion of food for the one person that you guarantee, for one person that you've guaranteed. Hopefully this is making sense. But also beyond that, what I learned, and this you, I wouldn't necessarily do this without a lot of experience and, and feeling really confident about it, but what I had learned in my other role when we did these B2B conferences, what we guaranteed about 15 to 20% less than the amount of guests that were actually coming to the event when we were confirming the food with the venue. And the reason for that was because people sometimes don't show up. People show up late. People might leave early. Somebody might get sick. Um, maybe they're stepping out and they miss the, the, the lunch or the dinner or whatever it is because they want to take a call or they're having too much fun over here. Okay, so there's in that case, we always knew that we didn't need 15 to 20% of that food. So therefore, when the food was served, it almost always balanced out and we saved money on the food, right? But we also knew that everybody was going to be fed. We kept a close eye on it so like staff wouldn't eat unless we knew all the guests were served first and we were good to go and our estimates were correct. So again, I wouldn't do that without a lot of experience and a lot of confidence. Um, but a nice thing to do, some venues do offer the ability for you to go ahead and donate leftover food to maybe a local food shelter. So try to organize that and make sure it doesn't go to waste. You know, you don't want to waste that food you paid for. Um, okay, another question here, guys. Jessica B. asked, how do you manage all of your time around the holidays for being a really fabulous party host, but also still making sure to be present and enjoy the moment yourself. Jessica B, I struggle with that. Boy, do I. So if you're planning events like I always have and I love to do, um, planning an event is just as much fun as hosting the event. But sometimes it's just tricky. Sometimes you can't enjoy it. You know, you might have a minute or two to really like take it in and soak it up. But you are the host, you are the planner if you're planning an event, and you're responsible and accountable for if that party is a success or not, right? So you always have to be on. You always have to have your event planner organization hat on, right? Um, so do the best that you can. Enjoy the moments that you can while they may be brief. But you're there to plan the party, right? So that comes first. And it's not always a great balancing act. Um, and let's see, we have Keisha C asked, what's the best way to organize your planning? And I think this takes some experience as well. And QC, if you don't, if you aren't really sure where to start or you're new to event planning, definitely consider taking a course with QC because it'll give you that foundation and those key elements in terms of how to begin the process of planning an event or a party. Um, but I do a lot of things. So I might have an event itinerary 
where I have literally contact information, and then I have timed out logistics information, even broken down to the audiovisual, to the catering, to the um, activities, and, and who's in charge of what. So an event itinerary is a great way to stay organized. Um, you always want to check in with your vendors, you, even though you, you can rely on them and you trust them. Make sure you call them the week of the party or a week before the event and just check in and say, hey, I just want to make sure you have everything you need from me. You're all set for Friday, December, whatever. Um, sometimes people will be caught off guard. I'm pretty sure that had I not checked in with one of the people who was supplying something for my wedding, like the flowers, they would have forgotten about my wedding flowers, honestly. So you always want to call and check in and do your due diligence. Because even if you have a signed contract, sometimes people flake or fall through. So cover your bases, check in with your vendors, make sure your time matches their time, create an event itinerary, communicate, communicate, communicate. Communication is key, okay, towards a successful event. Rachel R. asked, what's the best way to keep people at your event until the end? Probably depends on the event and it depends on your audience. So let's say for a holiday party, maybe you have a wide range age range. So it could be people in their early 20s all the way to people in their late 70s who are still working. Um, and there may not be anything you can do if somebody gets tired and they want to go home or if they don't feel really well, they've got some health issues and they want to go home. But if you have an event that's uh, smaller, maybe not smaller scale, but maybe a younger audience, for example, um, one way to keep them till the end is just constant engagement and activity. So I always think back to this event I planned at the Science Center called Yuri's Night Space Party. It was a younger, young professional demographic between the ages of 21 to 40-ish, and people would stay the whole night, but that's because we had constant entertainment. So there were drinks all night, there, were, there was food all night, there were activities and activations happening everywhere, um, live music, band, balloon drop at the end of the night. There were so many things we did that had people, made people want to stay, right? Um, that's one way to approach it and, and to keep them till the end. Know your audience and know what would want, why they would want to stay till the end. Or maybe you're saving raffles till the end. They have to be present to win that TV. And if that's the case, they might stick around, but they also might get annoyed with you and they, they'll be frustrated because they want to go home and sleep. Diane C. asked to discuss food allergies. This is so important, food allergies. So first of all, I want to talk about how to find out and uncover if you have food allergies to deal with. Um, so with food allergies, if you're doing some kind of RSVP form or maybe they're filling out a survey, you always want to ask, do you have any dietary restrictions? And if so, what are they? And people will respond. Or if you're sending out a pre-event uh, pre email, always ask what if anyone has dietary restrictions, please let you know by whatever date or deadline you set. And if they do, you can do your best to accommodate their needs. And you usually can. Most every venue will be able to offer you something for that guest, whether they're vegan, vegetarian, gluten, they're allergic to nuts, they're allergic to shellfish. Um, work directly with the venue when you collect those food allergens and talk about, I need three vegan plates, I need two gluten-free plates, I need one whatever plate. And then you also want to make sure that you identify your guests without embarrassing them in terms of their food allergy and also making sure that the guests and the catering staff are connected when they come to the event. So they can work together and kind of take that off your plate um, to make sure they get served the food that has been made special for them. So what we used to do at our conferences is we'd collect the food allergies and they'd slowly trickle in. I'd keep track of them uh, separately on a spreadsheet or where, however I was keeping track of them. And then I would send those guests a note ahead of time saying, yes, I'll be able to accommodate your dietary restriction when you show up and register for the event. Please introduce yourself to me and then I will introduce you to the catering staff and make sure you're all squared away and taken care of. 
upon arrival. So what I also did was we would, in the name badges, we'd slip a note in there to remind the guests with the food allergy, like, hey, we know you have a food allergy. Um, please introduce yourself to the staff and we will take care of you. So when they'd show up, they would, or when mealtime came, if they forgot or didn't remember, they would find us and they would say, hey, I'm Joe Schmo. I have the, I'm, I'm vegan. I need my vegan food. Then I would take them to the catering staff, introduce them. Catering staff would then know who they were and we'd be square for the rest of the time. It may not always work perfectly like that, but that's my suggestion for how to handle food allergies. And if you're doing serving food like buffet style, you want to have it labeled with what the buffet item is and those major allergens listed um, in terms of ingredients within that food that's being served. Or if you're past doing past hors d'oeuvres, make sure you know who the guy is who's allergic to nuts. If you're passing anything around with nuts, so you can tell a guy who's allergic to nuts, do not, whatever you do, do not eat the sweet potato souffle because it has pecans on it. Okay. So those are some ways you can work with, uh, work around food allergens, but it's really important to watch out for those things. And Elizabeth H asked, what kind of backdrop would you suggest for a small holiday party? So there's this awesome Facebook group and there's probably a few of them around and I don't remember what it's called, but I've seen so many incredible event planners post their works on this Facebook page. Um, so you could do simple, uh, what I was gonna say is go find some Pinterest pages or Facebook pages or groups where you can see what other planners are doing to help give you that create, you know, help, you know, give you that creative bug and give you some ideas. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with simple pipe and drape and draping some really beautiful fabric on it. Um, you could do a lot of cool stuff I've seen with balloons right now and, and really large signs. Um, so, and, and what's the backdrop for? Is it really just to outline the perimeter of the room and make it look and feel a little different? Is it like to focus on a main stage area? It depends on what the backdrop is too. There's so many cool and creative things that you can do. And if anybody has ideas or cool groups or places and resources they go to get that inspiration for creating backdrops and things, please share it on the feed. And then Lori C asked how to entertain in a smaller space. Um, it's really the same kind of thing. So if you have a more intimate group, um, really trying to give them an opportunity to engage and connect with each other is a, a great thing because if it's a smaller space, it's probably a smaller group of people you're entertaining. And if nobody's talking to each other and they're all nervous and shy, then they might all want to go home early. So how can you break the ice, make them feel comfortable, give them a couple drinks to loosen up, um, and, and you'll probably be on your way to a successful event, a successful party. So it's the same kind of elements and, and concepts, but in a smaller scale and maybe breaking the ice a little bit easier for a smaller group. And now I'm going to go into, thanks for your patience for those of you who asked questions during the webinar. So we have a couple more questions that were asked during the webinar. One was from Carolyn. And Carolyn asked, what about event insurance at a holiday party? Awesome question, Carolyn. And I've had to get myself some events insurances before for, for events and holiday parties. Just do a Google search. I don't know the exact company names, but um, you can just Google um, event insurance. And there are a lot of different companies that can quote you. The, uh, the costs will really depend on how many people are going. Is alcohol being served or not? Is the event ins in insured already by the venue or not? So um, the price totally ranges. I, I'd say for, um, it just depends on the size. I'm, I'm not going to give you a, a quote, but the quotes that I've gotten before for not serving any alcohol at an event where I needed insurance for a two-day conference type of event for 60-ish people, has been quoted at about four or five hundred dollars. If you include alcohol, price goes goes up. Okay, so I hope that helps. Simple Google search should get you the answers you need. And Daniela F. Hi, Daniela. You're my student. Nice to see you. Um, thanks for tuning in. She asked. 
For ex external event planners, what would you say is the percent of corporate parties that actually plan to have additional decor that are above and beyond the venue decor? Honestly, that is a hard question to answer, Daniela. Um, I really think it depends on the organization you're working for and what and how they've budgeted for their events. So I um, have seen corporate events have really strappy and tight budgets, yet there was enough room to do something really cool, but not expensive to make a centerpiece and, and uh, enhance the decor, really, or incorporate some kind of holiday theme, this or that. It, it, it's hard to put a number on it, but it depends on where you're working and um, what kind of money they have to spend, right? So I, I don't know if it's really a percentage, but if the if the decor is already built into the venue too, I'd say at least what I've seen is you don't have to decorate as much or at all if there is already some kind of decor incorporated into the venue because they've decorated for the holiday already. So that's my answer, my short answer there for you. All right, guys. So I am going to say I don't think we have any more questions that were submitted through the webinar while I was um, just going through. Um, so let's see if there's anything else. Really quick last call for questions, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I think this has probably been one of the longest webinars I've had, but you guys had some awesome, incredible questions. And I, I really hope that this has helped give you some ideas and maybe spark some creative creativity in you to get excited about planning your next holiday party. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have an awesome Thanksgiving, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. I send all my best wishes to you guys. All right. Have an awesome night. Bye.